Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I have a suitably crazy video for you today because we are going to be checking out the brand new NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080. This thing is massive, it is hugely expensive and it is also extremely fast. So we are going to be seeing just how fast it is today in this video right after a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com, where right now you can get some great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. Even better news is that I have a discount code to share with you guys that will get you even more money off this software. So Microsoft Windows 10 Pro, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11 if you want to do that. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, Click apply and the UK price, for example, will drop from £17 all the way down to just £12.76 and you'll see similar discounts elsewhere in other currencies as well. Once purchased, you'll want to head to your order page and copy the Windows 10 Pro key shown at the bottom of the page. When you're in Windows, you want to move your mouse over to the start button, right click, go to settings, then update and security, and then move up to activation and Finally, click on change your product key, copy and paste your brand new product key into the box, click next, then click activate, and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. Finally, you can do exactly the same thing with Office 2021 Professional by clicking the buy button using code CR25 again, click apply and you'll get a hefty discount on Office as well. Thanks again to SCD Key for sponsoring this video and you can see a whole bunch more links and discounts in the description below. So my first impressions of the RTX 4080 when I got it out the box, well, <laughs> This thing is enormous. It's absolutely ridiculously enormous for what isn't even NVIDIA's flagship graphics card. This thing um, is unfortunately the same size as the RTX 4090. As you can see there, these two cards side by side, exactly the same width, the same length, the same depth, triple slot. Um, it ain't gonna fit in a lot of mini RTX cases out there, that's for sure. And even in your ATX case, you might struggle to fit this in more than a few ways in terms of making sure it's cooled properly, making sure you've got enough clearance um, down to the power supply cover. And if you're mounting it vertically in your case, you'll want to consider the fact that this thing is three slots, so it might be sitting pretty close to your side panel as well. That's quite a few restrictions for what isn't even a flagship graphics card. And that's before we get onto the price. $1,200 is a lot for a graphics card. Now, even if you have a budget for your PC of $2,000, that's not leaving you a lot of room for a decent CPU that is not gonna be bottlenecking this thing. Um, although we do have DLSS 3.0, which we'll go on to in a minute to kind of circumvent that. But this is just kind of next level in terms of cash that you are going to need to stump up for these kind of graphics cards. Now. AMD does have some slightly cheaper offerings, offerings in the wings in terms of its um, RX 7000 series, which are due for launch in the next few weeks. The 7900 XTX retails for $1,000, so that's $200 less than the initial launch price of the, um, or the base price of the 4080. But we don't know how things are gonna shape up in terms of things actually being on shelves. Um, so today it will be very, very interesting to see how things actually shape up on those shelves with the RTX 4080. So absolutely enormous, very, very fast, very, very expensive, but did we really expect anything else from Nvidia at this point? I don't know whether we did. So what we'll be doing today is checking out how fast it is compared to the RTX 4090, a valid comparison, it's the next card up. Um, the next call up in terms of price and performance, I should, I should add, and also against some previous generation RTX 30 series graphics cards, as well as a couple of graphics cards from AMD. They are not, sadly, the RX 7000 series because they have not been launched yet, and that's not me saying that those graphics cards might be worth considering instead of the 4080. I just don't know yet because I haven't tested them because AMD hasn't sent me them yet. But that's all the more reason to subscribe to this channel and make sure you turn on not notifications because I will be taking a look at those graphics cards at some point. So definitely subscribe. 
and turn on notifications. As I say, I also want to hear from you in the comments. What do you think about this video? And also, would you be considering this graphics card for your own system? And also like this video as well, just because you like me or you like the card or you like NVIDIA or whatever. Just all those likes help boost me through the uh, algorithm here on YouTube. So that's about it. I think we need to, uh, to carry on and take a look at this card and uh, see how fast it is, but not before we check out those specifications quickly. The specifications then, and we're looking at a similar boost frequency to the 4090 and also significantly higher than any of the RTX 30 series cards here as well. So CUDA cores, a significant climb down from the 4090, which is the same for the Tensor cores at 304. RC cores at 76, ROPs at 112, and also a narrower memory bus as well at 256-bit versus 384-bits. 16 gigabytes of GDDR6, and that's also a climb down from the standard 24 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory for the 3090 Ti and 3090. However, it is a significant step up from the 3080 Ti and the 3080. Moving down, and we have the enormous L2 cache of 65 kilobytes, and that's significantly more than both the 3090 Ti and 3090. Uh, not that far away from the RTX 4090, though. The power, we're looking at a TDP of 320 watts, and that's less than the RTX 3090, and significantly less than the 4090 and the 3090 Ti. So hopefully not as crazy power consumption as we've seen from uh, previous reviews with the 30 series uh, flagships and the 4090. Finally, then, then the price $1,200 versus $1,600 for the 4090. That's matching the launch price of the RTX 3080 Ti, but obviously a lot more than the 3080. Our first game is Rainbow Six Extraction, and at 1440p and ultra settings, the RTX 4080, way out in front of the next best performing card, which was the RX 6950 XT, and significantly faster than the RTX 3080, which you kind of hope so, given the difference in price. The RTX 4090, though, way out in front with some significantly faster frame rates than the RTX 4080, so no real CPU bottleneck going on here as far as we can see. Stepping things up to 4K then, and again the RTX 4080 eking out a bit more of a lead over the RTX 30 and 90 tire, which now sits in uh, third place. But again, the RTX 4090 definitely worth the extra cash if this is one of your favourite games, offering significantly higher frame rates than the RTX 4090. But compared to the RTX 3080, again the RTX 4090 offering significantly more performance. Finally, staking with 4K, we are moving on to DLSS mode now then, and again the RTX 4080 streaking ahead of the RTX 3090 Ti with some massive frame rates, but again the RTX 4090 way out in front and uh, generally justifying its extra price tag over the new card that we're looking at today. Compared to the RTX 3080 though, the RTX 4080 has to be said it is significantly faster uh, as you'd expect given the price difference. Next up is Halo Infinite and this was benchmarked in the uh, campaign mode of the game and it proved to be quite variable but even so the RTX 4080 while it wasn't that far ahead on the 99th percentile than the RTX 3090 Ti or 3090 it was significantly further ahead with the average frame rate at 211 frames per second. Stepping up to 4K though, and the RTX 4080 again offering a significantly higher average frame rate than the RTX 3090 Ti, but not so much on the minimum 99th percentile. And again, the RTX 4090 offering significantly more performance here on both of those metrics. Next up is Metro Exodus, enhanced edition, and with ultra settings, 1440p, hair works off, and ray tracing. Ultra enabled, we have the RTX 4080 way out in front of every single other card except, surprise surprise, for the RTX 4090. So a clear winner here and uh, largely justifying its extra price tag over the RTX 3090 Ti, although not that much faster in terms of justifying its price tag over the RTX 3080. 
Shifting up a gear to 4K now then, and we have another win for the RTX 4080, which was significantly, significantly faster again than the RTX 3090 Ti, but lagging quite a way behind the RTX 4090 there. So if Metro is your thing, then the RTX 4090 is the ultimate card for you. Our final test just adds a DLSS into the equation with balanced mode and here obviously the AMD card's not doing very well at all because they don't have any equivalent in this game but the RTX 4080 also doing very 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 well at the top especially on the average frame rate which was only just behind the RTX 4090 and significantly higher than the RTX 3090 Ti. Next up is Forza Horizon 5 and at 1440p we're looking at a, a reasonable performance from the RTX 4080 but it's fairly clear that this is a an AMD favoring game with both the RTX 6950 XT and 6900 XT performing a fair bit better and the RTX 4090 though uh, way out in front with much much higher average and minimum 99th percentiles however the RTX 4080 did manage significantly higher average frame rates than older RTX 30 series cards. Next, stepping up to 4K with ray tracing, and we have the RTX 4080 actually sitting in the middle this time of the RX 6900 XT and 6950 XT, but the key thing here is a much, much higher average frame rate, which is what we saw before, and that's uh, massively outstripping the likes of the RTX 3080 Ti as well. But again, the RTX 4090 offering significantly higher frame rates than the 4080 in this game. Flight Simulator often remains fairly stubborn in terms of its frame rates, and there was a little scaling here between the RTX 3090 all the way up to the RTX 4090, although you may see some notable gains moving up from the RTX 3080, but it's clear here that you'll need a DLSS 3.0 to get significantly higher frame rates here or remove other bottlenecks in, in your system. Even here, though, we were using a Core i9-12900K, which is no slouch. Moving up to 4K, and there was slightly more difference here between the cards, but the RTX 4080 uh, not really offering that much of a benefit over the likes of the RTX 3090 Ti or RTX 3090, but reasonable amount more performance over the RTX 3080, but in no way justifying that extra outlay. Our final flight simulator test then, and here we remain at 4K, but this time enabling DLSS in balance mode. And again, we don't really see that many higher frame rates, uh, just other bottlenecks in this system. And of course, without the frame generation, you're not really going to remove those bottlenecks. So not really worth upgrading from anything here other than perhaps the RTX 3080 or 3080 Ti, but moving up to the RTX 4080, not really justifying its price here. Next up is Watch Dogs Legion, and at 1440p with DXR ray tracing enabled, uh, we have a minimum 99th percentile of 75 frames per second, which is leagues ahead of the RTX 3090 Ti. Moving up to 4K then, and here the RTX 4090 started to pull away with much, much higher average and minimum 99th percentile frame rates. But the RTX 4080 was significantly faster than the RTX 3090 Ti with a minimum 99th percentile of 43 frames per second versus 32 frames per second. Our final stop in Watch Dogs was basically the same settings, 4K, DXR, but with DLSS enabled in its balanced mode. And here, once again, it's a pretty similar story. The RTX 4080 managing a very, very high minimum 99th percentile of 76 frames per second, which was actually not very far at all behind the RTX 4090, except on the average frame rate, the latter managed an extra 10 frames per second, but a big win here for Nvidia over its previous generation cards. As I wasn't entirely sure how to run DLSS 2 mode here, I just decided to stick with DLSS 3, but even here, you can see the fantastic benefit of using DLSS 3.0 and removing the other system bottlenecks that you usually see in Microsoft Flight Simulator, essentially doubling the frame rate for both the RTX 4080 and 4090 in this game and making it a much, much smoother experience. Finally then, Cyberpunk 2077 and again DLSS 3.0 making itself known, basically quadrupling the frame rates 
from the standard RTX 4080 with no DLSS at all. That's then That then triples up to DLSS 2.0 and nearly, but not quite, doubles again from DLSS 2.0 up to DLSS 3.0. The 4080 here with DLSS 3.0 actually faster than the RTX 4090 in DLSS 2.0 mode. Power consumption was actually fairly reasonable at 456 watts, which was less than we found with the RTX 3080. So hopefully if you're running a, an RTX 30 series system, you probably won't have to upgrade your power supply and this was significantly less, so well over 100 watts less than the RTX 4090. Looking at the frequencies and temperatures for a moment, and we can see a much higher boost frequency than NVIDIA led us to believe, reaching 2,800 megahertz, which is pretty impressive. The GPU temperature is only peaking at 60 degrees with an ambient room temperature of 22 degrees. So again, that is uh, pretty impressive there. But then given such a large cooler, you'd kind of hope that things would be uh, kept in check. It was reasonably quiet, uh, but obviously if you're gunning at over 2000 RPM on a fairly large fan, then that's going to obviously still make some noise. So what do we make of the RTX 4080 then? Well, this thing is an absolute beast. It's much bigger, it's much more powerful and much faster in games than I think I initially thought. I thought we were dealing with something that was akin to a 3080 replacement. This doesn't really feel like that. This feels like another step up perhaps to where the 3090 was initially. That's what this card feels like. Um, it's certainly got the price for that. $1,200 is a huge amount to spend on a graphics card. You also have some serious considerations when it comes to its size. This is going to be a difficult graphics card to fit in a lot of cases. Mini ITX, you're going to have to pick your case very, very carefully. There aren't many that can fit something like this with triple slots and a massive cooler on it. Probably want to water cool it in some situations. And even with ATX cases, you're going to need to make sure that there is enough space there, that the graphics card is getting enough airflow, especially if you're planning on mounting it vertically as well. Now, the thermals, obviously, uh, they're pretty good. The power consumption is reasonable. You're probably not going to have to buy a new uh, power supply for this thing. It is less, a lot less than the RTX 4090. But I would definitely consider one of the new cables as long as you're aware of the potential pitfalls there with bending them and all that kind of stuff. Um, there obviously have been some fairly significant issues with those recently. Now, Overall, this is just an absolutely crazy graphics card and I'm not saying that you should go out and buy one, but obviously if you have that kind of money, you know what you're doing and you want the best without spending an absolutely obscene amount with the RTX 4090, then this is probably the graphics card for you. It strikes a good balance between the craziness of this thing and just getting massively more performance and frame rates than the previous generation of graphics cards. And that's what this card does particularly well, albeit for a rather obscene amount of money. So I would like to thank NVIDIA for sending it over. I would like to thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe because I'll be back with some more great videos very, very soon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.